What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over different types of attacks um, in the hitboxes and how they're set up. So for example, high, medium, and low hitboxes, and how we can guard against them or take damage to them even when we're guarding. So for example, we got a, we actually have a lot of examples here. So say I'm, I, I just do a basic attack. The character takes full damage, and they go into a specific hit reaction based off that attack. I have changed the hit stun times to be very long so that we can see what's going on. But I have an attack, and again, he, he goes into a pretty long hit stun. Now if I do a crouch attack, he goes into a different hit stun. And yes, we have the materials changing, which is why he turned green, but ignore that for now. You can see the hit stun animations were different. Then, say so I do this attack, he's got even a different hit stun animation. Now they should, you know, maybe my animations could be a little bit better, but you can see that it's three different hit reaction animations and they depend on the type of attack we're doing if you if you see any games uh where people are characters are in long combos you can see they actually keep repeating their own animations and that's because they have a certain hit reaction tied to a certain type of attack some attacks may have a specific hit reaction that all characters can can use to match up with that attack but a lot of your basic attacks and combo attacks are going to just have the character use their own hit reaction attack and it's going to depend on the type of attack that it is um, you could even base it off of your light medium heavy attack whatever you want to do that's up to you but what i'm doing today is i'm going to add in different hit reactions for different types of attacks that we tag by an enum and i'm also going to cover all the blocking logic that goes along with it so i will let this round end actually i'll just beat this opponent all right, so we're gonna get back into this now and uh, and do it all in one go for the um, the different types of blocks that we have based on the different types of attacks. So this is gonna be a little bit weird to do both with one player, but essentially, you know, you get hit, you take full damage, you go into the hit reaction for that type. If I'm blocking, say I'm standing blocking and there's a high hitbox used, then I block. Now, we don't have like a block hit effect, but you know that it's working because it canceled the block after I was hit and I only took half damage. Now, a standing block can also take an overhead, right? An overhead is sometimes referred to as a mid, but really, uh, it's basically if you're standing and blocking and take a mid or an overhead hit, then you will block it. So this is considered an overhead and you can see I did block the damage. Now, the other case while standing is that you get hit by a low hitbox. You hit by a low hitbox, you will not uh, block it if you were stand standing and blocking. And you can see I did not. I got the hit reaction. Whoops. I got the hit reaction, and he did take full damage, and then I hit him again, but that was just a misinput. So, now let's do it the other way around. Let's say I am crouching and blocking. Now, if I hit him with a high, that will be a successful block. Blocking while crouching does block a high attack. Now, um, low... A low attack while blocking is also a successful block. Whoops. Um, and then if I am to block and do an overhead, sorry, it's hard with I'm both I'm on the keyboard with both characters. If I do an overhead, it does actually hit. You can see he did the hit reaction. He canceled the hit animation, or excuse me, the block animation, and he took full damage. So you can see all of our different our attack types are working. They're tagged on the attacks and they are causing the character to either be able to block or take damage based on the attack. Now that was a slow example, but really at this point, um, it doesn't really matter, right? It's just the fact that that functionality is in. You know, if you're comboing someone, you hit them three or four times and it's different, low, mid, high, low, mid, high, whatever, or low, you know, high overhead, then it, it could really make all the difference if you can block that or not, depending on what you can do. And remember, we can switch between block states. So you could technically, like, again, I, I won't really have a good example here, but you could, like, block and, yeah, well, either way, it's kind of hard to do with two people, but you could, you could block and, you know, switch between standing and crouching all at the same time. So this is good. It's good that we have different states for that. Now let's go over exactly what it took to make that happen. Let's go into Visual Studio, into our code, and let me say here, if you've not watched the other episodes of this tutorial, we were very far along. I think we were episode 73, so we've done quite a bit in this series. 
If you want to catch up, I'll leave a link to the playlist that has all the episodes as well as a few additional ones for some of the other things that I've added to the game right here. If you don't care about that and you just want to get uh, caught up on hitboxes, then I'll also leave the way we made our hitboxes for you right here. Because it's basically going to be taking that exact logic and then just adding more to it. Otherwise, we're good to go so we can get started. In our hitbox actor.h, I've added another enum. I've called it e hitbox height, and I put low, mid, high, and none. Remember, mid here is referring to overhead. You can call it overhead if you want, it does not matter. The reason I've called it mid is because, first of all, I like low, mid, high, and I'm also familiar with those terms. Um, I do know, of course, I'm familiar with overhead as well, but I'm familiar with low, mid, high, and using that and I'm comfortable with it in terms of, you know, how it affects blocking and things like that. You change it to be whatever you want and use it however you need. I also do have a none in here, which is basically if I want a hitbox that does damage, but for some reason I don't want to determine type, maybe, you know, it's some sort of, maybe it's a projectile, let's say and projectile can have a low mid high, but this one doesn't. Maybe it's an explosion that just hits everywhere and it just launches the character back. That could be a, an example of none that I was thinking of. I don't think they technically exist in most fighting games. They probably have an, a value assigned to them or just they are none, but they don't like actually have a value that they pass. I'm just using none kind of as a placeholder for we can throw it in if we ever need a special case. You don't need, you don't need it for this episode and you might not ever need it feel free to add it if you want to or not. But regardless, you just make this enum and then you have all your types so we know how to react to hits and we also know what we can block. Of course, with any enum that we make, um, we're gonna want a variable of it so we can store the value that this hitbox actually has. So right under my hitbox type enum in my hitbox actor.h, I've added a hitbox height. And as I said, the height or height classification of the hitbox. So you could technically do your height based off where it uh, collided with the character, but I wanted to go with the method of just each move has its own type, has its own height, and that was pretty much it. So that's why I called it the height classification. All right. And then I don't set anything in the constructor. You don't really need to set enum to defaults because they automatically default to the top item. So even though we default a lot of things that are pretty obvious, uh, you know, you don't really need to default an enum for any reason. So sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. This time I didn't. Now, in the fighter template character, we are gonna have to make a minor change. Now, uh, it's gonna change the character state we're going to add different stun states. I kind of went back and forth, back and forth on this a bit. You could have one stun state still and have a boolean or an enum that sets, you know, the type of stun, but I just felt it was unnecessary. I mean, quite frankly, I think it's good to have a stun low, stun mid, stun high state because it's good to know what hit reaction to play and it's good to know what you can do out of that. So for example, if you're stunned a certain state, you may only be able to do certain things like block a certain way or, you know, other things like that. And so if that's the case, then it could be good to have its own state. You can change this however you like if you don't like it. But I kind of like having three different states for it and three different hit reactions and then three different checks for if we're blocking that certain way. I know some people are scared about changing the enums because they sometimes give hot reload issues. If you are to launch through Visual Studio, you should no longer get them, which is why I'm not so scared about changing this anymore. But anyway, you can go ahead and change E stunned to be E stunned low, change the display name as well, and then just copy it two times and make mid and high. So scroll down in your header file to wherever take damage is. And it's got a bunch of things as damage hits them time, blocks them time, launch amount, um, and push back amount. But I've also added E hitbox height, hitbox height. <laughs> and basically this will just determine what hitbox hit us. And that's it for the header file. Once you've made that, we can then go into the CPP. A 
Okay, and what you have to do now, this is very important, is you have to go through and change all the areas that were stunned, just stunned, to make sense with the new logic now. So what I've done is this. I grabbed my first term that I found, and it looked like this. E character state, stun. Copy it, control C, or right click on it, and hit copy. And then control F to find, and paste it here. Control V, again, or right click and paste. Now once it's in here, you can go through and it'll find all the spots for you. I've already replaced them, but I will show you everywhere that I had to replace them so that you can replace them. If you click this little drop down arrow, you can replace. So what you could do is this if you wanted. You know, you can replace all terms. If you press this button, it will repla replace everything found in the top box with everything that you entered in the bottom box. So you could do that if you want. I'm not gonna do it because it will actually mess up what I have now. But if not, you don't have to replace them. You can just find them manually do it. Here's what we got to do. In jump, I had it so that we could not be stunned if we were going to jump. So I had character state not equal to E character state E stunned. But now I really want to check all of these. If they're not equal to stun low, if and character state is not equal to stun mid, and character state is not equal to E stunned high. And I have more logic. Okay, but the other logic I didn't add just now. The only thing I changed was I changed stunned to stun low, stun mid, and stunned high. Let me go to the next one. And I had start crouching, same thing, change stun to low, mid, and high. Stop crouching, stun to low, mid, and high. Same with start and stop blocking. Same with move right. And this if statement right here. Same with move right controller, and this is statement right here. It's the same change I'm making every time. I'm just changing stunned to be stunned low and, so character state not equal to stun low, and character state not equal to stun mid, and character state not equal to stun high. Same thing every time. Okay. Then we have start attacks. So for all of your attacks, exceptional attacks, I will go through all these real quick just to show you that there's none in between. Okay, now in take damage, we're actually going to set it, so ignore that one for now. We'll come back to it. Oh, that was actually the last one. Okay, cool. So, now that you've replaced all those, and I know that's a little bit a little bit annoying, but it's pretty quick, and it honestly, I just think it's the right decision. I, I've been doing a lot of the, the buffered input stuff lately, and I just think that the way that this is going to be handled, that that's a good way to handle it. So, that's why I made the change. So now we can use, you can see, you have to update the CPP as well to make sure you include this variable. All we need to do is determine if the character successfully blocked or not, which we can set up without having set the hitbox heights on the actual hitboxes. We just need to know the logic we want in place. And we need to be able to set our um, actual stun state or just our state in general to the type of hitbox that we received so if we were hit by a high hitbox then we want to receive the high stun state so in take damage we had an initial state here that said if character state not equal to blocking basically we're saying if the state that the character is in is not blocking they did not block the attack so you know, then we can just take full damage. But we have to change this up a bit now. So we just have to change this if statement to match the blocking conditions. Now this is a pretty big if statement. I don't normally do what I'm about to do, but I think it's the right call here to make it a little bit nicer to look at. So you can actually do this with if statements. Um, I find it to be admittedly a little bit ugly. Oops. I know a lot of people don't like the, the singular line, so I could understand thinking that that's ugly. But there are times and it definitely comes in handy here. So this is still one if statement, this is still one line. Code executes, and it doesn't care about white space it's called, which is basically space in between. So it doesn't matter that we separated these lines, this is still running as one if statement. Just as long as our symbols are correct, like our parentheses on the end, this will be executed the same. So now we have our conditions right here. 
we have take damage. This is how we're gonna determine if we take full damage or blocking damage. So we need the three conditions that will make it so that we successfully blocked. First condition, so try and follow this because I know there's a lot of symbols going on. I'll, I'll separate it like this. I have parentheses around each individual condition. Then I have a set of parentheses around the entire, all the conditions, not the if statement, but all the individual conditions. See this? So one parenthesis for one line. You can see as I click it, um, then the corresponding parenthesis that ends it highlights. This parenthesis is all the way at the bottom. That's because we're saying not. That's what this exclamation mark is. So we're checking these three individually, and then we're saying not any of them. So if the, if this uh, condition fails, then we go into this logic. And these are the regular parentheses around the if statement. So just try and follow the way that's set up. I'll move my mouse so it doesn't look as confusing. And then I'm gonna go over the logic here. So for the first one, we have character state is equal to blocking. So if the character is blocking and the hitbox that they were they are receiving was equal to a high hitbox. So this is a standing or crouching block. It does not matter, we do not specify, but the hitbox type was high. If that's the case, then the character is going to successfully block. Then we have another case. And these are ORs, that's what these two bars are, right? So we have OR, character state is equal to blocking. They are not crouching, so this is a standing block. And they are hit by a mid. Okay, that's how that would evaluate the true. Or, lastly, character state is blocking and crouching, and they're hit by a low. That would also be a successful block. So all, th all three of these are the successful block conditions. But then we have not. We want to make sure that the character is not doing any of those. Because if they're not, then they take full damage. If they are, okay, if they are doing any of these, then it'll go down to this else and then it'll do all the block logic. So it's the same logic as before. I didn't change anything with any of that. All I did was add this, change this from just not blocking to all these conditions where a successful block could be done. This still will work with uh, with walking backward because if you're colliding with proximity hitbox, then you do in fact go to the blocking state, which would then be checked accurately. The only thing you have to be careful of is there's no way to auto block crouching currently. And there might not ever be. It depends on if we want to set it up like by holding back. And that's fine if we do. But for right now, that's not in place. So just don't expect it. Okay. So we have our three states and we say if it's none of those, then we just take full damage. And then if we're taking damage and we're not blocking, we want to go to the stun states just like we were doing before. But instead of just setting it to E character stunned, I now go into where I set the stun, stun, the stun time if it's greater than zero. Then we do a switch on hitbox height. And that's what, I was, that's what I'm using in here to determine if the character has successfully blocked or not. I'm using that hitbox height and checking the type of it. So now we're gonna switch off of this hitbox height and we're gonna set the character state correctly depending on the type of hit that it was. So we do switch, hitbox height, case, and then we choose our, our cases so we have high, and if, it's, if it was a high hitbox that they were hit by, character state equals character state E stunned high, and then we break. If it was a mid or an overhead hit, whatever you wanna call that, then we set it to be east on mid. And if it's a low, we set it to be low. Make sure you break after all these, otherwise it will actually spill through and you'll do more logic than you need to do. So make sure you break at the end after all of these. And then uh, I just, I do have the case for none and then I just break, I don't do anything with it right now. We could do something with it if we want, but we just don't have to right now. All right, and then we can go into the editor and we need to update some things for our anim bp as well because we had some some places where uh stunned was being used and now we want to make sure that it's the correct type so there's a few things in particular i actually have one open so we'll start with this one um so crouch to crouch hit reaction okay so crouch to hit, crouch hit reaction is this state this state for me was just if the character was stunned while they were crouching you could have different uh, stuns for this if you want 
you know, like if you want to have low, high, and overhead on your crouching hit reactions, then you can. I don't have different crouching hit reactions right now, so I'm sending them all to the same state. But regardless, all you need to do is change the character state in here from uh, just stunned to stunned low, stunned mid, and stunned high. Or node, meaning any of these, will send it from crouch to crouch hit reaction. Or have three different crouch hit reactions, low, mid, and high, and then check for the corresponding one to send it to that state. Now, I already did the crouch and crouch hit reaction in the past, so that's nothing new. I just wanted to show you the transition rule had changed. Another thing, I've added two new states now. So we had mid hit reaction before. Um, I think at one point I actually called it high hit reaction, but it doesn't matter what it was called before. I just wanted to let you know I had one hit reaction state before. Make sure you add two more. We can have low, mid, and high. And they're pretty simple. They're, they're pretty much all the same. So before, this is the one we had. We were using our character reference, getting the stun time, playing the animation at that play rate basis. And this will basically uh, make the animation work for how long the stun time is. I do have anim notifies in here, but they're not actually necessary. You see, I actually don't have them on this one, and it still works. Okay. If you go into these, that was the mid. This is the low. It's the exact same thing, except I'm playing a different animation. And the high is going to be the exact same thing, but again, playing a different animation. Okay. And at this point, we need to set up the conditions for each of these. So one of these will need to be changed because we had uh, a shared transition, which I was calling a high hit reaction was my shared transition in the past, but now we're going to need one for each of these. So first of all, let's look at this. I did a high hit reaction. This is what I had. And we were doing character reference, character state equals stunned. And that was the transition rule that I made shared. And that's good, but we need to make it stunned high. We're going to the high hit reaction. So idle to high hit reaction needs to be stunned high. And if you want to make it a shared hit reaction, because I'm also being able to go from walking forward to high hit reaction and walking backward to high hit reaction, just in case you somehow get hit by it, even when you're walking backward and should, uh, should block, then the way you do it is you click on the node, and then, well, you have to click on an unshared node, like this one, and say promote to shared, and it'll ask you to name it, so I called it high hit reaction. From there, you can honestly pretty much guess what's gonna happen. We're gonna do this for all three, but I will go through it just to be safe. So I have another one that I made. It is the exact same rules, but instead of stunned high, it is stunned mid, okay? Stun mid, and then I promoted it to shared and called it mid hit reaction. I also do that from walking forward and walking back. I know the colors are hard to see. That's why I was making sure. I think these are the same color, but this is not the same transition rule. <laughs> so I apologize. But here's the um, idle to high, idle to mid, and then idle to low. Okay, the yellow, purple, pink combo. So you can see here, this is walking backward all three, walking forward all three, and this is from idle to all three. And you should probably have more than that. But I'm going to go over, uh, kind of trying to clean these state machines up so that we can make them more organized and, and more easily go to all the states because it is becoming a mess so all right but lastly we already went over it. i'll be quick but switch low hit reaction is stunned low and make sure you make the shared rule that i called low hit reaction now to go back from these states it's actually pretty simple um you can go from high mid and low to idle just by automatic rule transition. Automatic rule based here. See that, this long name right here? That's all I do for all of them. I don't have any sort of extra logic. Just basically, once they're done, then go back to the, the idle state. One other thing, I do have mid hit reaction to be able to go to launched. Um, you know, feel free to, to add this for high hit reaction and low hit reaction. 
there's a state called launch from ground or a shared transition called that so you can just go ahead and add these and say launch from ground the only reason I have not done that yet is because whoops is because uh, you won't really be able to see the transitions as you can see here so I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of it before I did it I'm doing it now but you can see how they kind of all go on top of each other so there are three here there's one from low mid and high to launched using the same rule and again that rule was covered in another episode and now this is pretty much done although you do have to be careful there are some other you'll probably get some other errors for where um, the stun states are so for example to be able to go from launch to idle um, I have another rule in here this is this is launch to idle and I had a rule that was basically uh, if it if the state is not launched and not stunned then you can return from launch to idle all right but now we have to make sure that the state is not stunned low stun mid stun high launched and it's an and because it can't be any of these if we want to return to idle so your launch to idle state should look like this And we're going to do something similar. Um, there's one more we have to do. The actual just launched state. Not launched from ground that I just applied here, but launched. That way it could be launched at any time. Like, you see how we're launched from a jump? Then I have this launched uh, shared transition rule. And this one, I have the same thing, but a little bit different. Basically, it's the same thing in terms of it's the same nodes, low, mid, high, and launched. But it's basically if any of these are true. The other one, launch to idle, is if none of those were true. We're no longer stunned or launched. But this one is going into launched. So if we're stunned low, stunned mid, stunned high, or launched, or then we can go into these rules. Those were the only ones I had to change. You may have to change a few yourself to, to fit with your game. But otherwise, this should be pretty good. Your state machine should be set up and you shouldn't have any errors. If you have any errors, just continue fixing them based off of the new states. But once you do that, you have your, your three hit reactions in. Um, just to clear things up before we go any farther, you should see that I don't have any transition events off of my rules here. So nothing that you're missing there. All right, so now our animations are set up and our take damage is set up. But the last thing we need to do is actually make it so our hitboxes can have the, the proper data that we need. So we have good old functions here like create active hitbox, create proximity hitbox. You could do this for both. I'm just gonna do it for create active hitbox for now. Maybe we wanna do it later for create proximity or some of the other ones, but for now create active hitbox is good. I have this function here and it's you can fill out all the data that you'll need. I went ahead, as you can expect, and added a new parameter to create active hitbox. Make sure you clicked on it either here or here, and you'll be able to see this in the details panel. Add a new parameter. You can move it up the list by hitting the arrows if you want. I moved it all the way up to the second here, and I just look for the, the enum. So I wanted E hitbox, whoops, E hitbox height. That was the type, and I just called the name height. So now I can go and choose which one I want. And you can choose it for every single hitbox. So I've changed a few of them. I haven't changed all of them. Most of them are still on high because that's what I had as the, uh, as what I was trying to test a lot of the attacks out as. So all the defaults are low. I set the crouching ones to be low, but you can just change them, change them for each attack. Low, mid, high, or none, again, if you have a use for that. Okay, and then inside the function, you'll now have this new parameter. You may have to move a few things around just to organize a little bit better because when I did this, uh, you know, this was overlapping with player transform, so I had to move it down. But just clean it up a bit if, it, if it's overlapping with each other. And then we're gonna do the same thing we do all the time in this function, which is basically take the parameters that were passed in and set the hitbox parameters to that value. So we have our height here. Okay, you can see I've done a reroute node and I brought it all the way over here. And this right here, this blue line is the hitbox actor BP we spawn. So we spawn this and we set all our variables in it. I moved hitbox damage over. I pulled off of this and I said hitbox height. 
and I set it. Then I pass in the hitbox height that comes from the parameter in the function. And now the height is sent. Now the rest of it is the same as it always has been. I haven't changed anything else with it, so you can leave it alone. And feel free to add that to things like create proximity hitbox if you want. Lastly, we're going to need to be able to go into the hitbox and actually set that value when we call take damage. So in the hitbox actor BP, we have a, an event called check collision, which determines if we've collided and what we've collided with and what type of hitbox we are. If it's a strike hitbox, we call take damage and we pass it all the, all the values we need. Well now, take damage has a hitbox height value or a variable. So make sure you grab the hitbox height. Remember, we're in the hitbox after BP. So that variable we made earlier called hitbox height, we can just grab right here, get hitbox height, and pass that in to the parameter for both player one and two. These two areas, this is if it collide with player one, if it collide with player two. Um, actually, it's the other way around. If it collide with player two and if it collide with player one. And then we pass in hitbox height. And that's about it, guys. If there's any sort of blocking or, or you know different type of hit reaction you need to do, you just use the appropriate type. Use the type that was now assigned by the height of the hitbox. And when it goes into take damage, it will check against the you know if the character is blocking and has the right conditions. And if that's not accurate, then they'll just take the full damage. But if it is accurate and they did block then they'll successfully perform the block and perform the same block logic that we set up many, many episodes ago. Otherwise, they will take a hit and they will now play a different hit reaction. Again, I'm actually, um, I have different different hit reactions here and I gave the hit stun time a pr pretty large amount here. You can see I, I made it like 0.8. So you can play around with it as much as you need to to get the values correct and just make sure that the hit reactions and the blocks are correct. But other than that, you should be good to go. I don't foresee any other issues with that. Just make sure you change all your E stunned states to your new low, mid, and high states and you should be golden. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If it helps you, please subscribe. It does more for me and the channel than anything else you can do and I just really appreciate it. I'm going to give a huge shout out to my Patreon membership and my YouTube membership supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the series and support me. It makes me very, very happy and it encourages me to keep working harder. I can't wait for everything we're going to do in the future. I do want to let you guys know that I'm working on buffered input, which is one of the most important systems. It's basically intentional input lag. And uh, I'm working to get that out as soon as I can. It basically is going to take in... You know, it's gonna it's gonna convert the system to be using frames, and then it's going to take in a basically how long we want to wait between, and it's gonna intentionally delay a little bit. That way, we can actually perform actions before they are before they can be done. You can kind of pre-buffer, right? You can pre-plan your actions, and it will also make it so that we don't have to use seconds for anything anymore, like our our clearing our command buff. If you want to come check out some live streams, we stream live on YouTube right here, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a side-scroller game that we're working on during the stream. You can come hang out with me and check me out while I do that. But otherwise, that's all I got for you. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.